Alrighty everybody, W1RCP, and we have a project. We're doing an iambic CW Morse code paddle. Jonathan Kane is the one who designed this particular design. It's on printables, and these are what the pieces look like after I printed them. I used a skirt to make sure that there was good adhesion with my wonderfully green Pet G. And probably the funnest part cleaning up is this guy. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do for that. I've already built one of these keys that's sitting over here. That was my test run before I figured I'd show it on a video. I'm gonna make a couple of these for my friends. And they're pretty easy to 3D print. They're pretty easy to build if you have a little bit of patience. The spring's the tricky part. And you'll see that at the end of the video. So now let's go ahead and start cleaning up some of these pieces. I'm not gonna clean this up till a little bit later because this will be the first one that I'll lose. So the first thing that we need to do is to get all of the brim off of here. And there's some support material. So this right here breaks off pretty easily. That is support material. And I had already drilled a hole through it just to kind of open those holes up a little bit. But I'm gonna show you another trick that I had to use. I bought cheap M3 size screws off of the Zon and when they start to go under tension and friction, they tend to lock up and then strip and you won't get them out. I had a heck of a time with this first key over here doing that. Now, one of the tools that I'm gonna use is a very, very wonderfully dull blade. And we take and we just carefully, I'm not putting any pressure at all because I don't want to slip and cut my thumb off and you see how I, I immediately stopped it before it got there. And these are all the pieces that need to be cleaned off. And I'll go in one direction and then I'll go in the other. See, this one's a little more crumbly. One direction, then the other. So we got that kind of cleaned up. And now we'll go in the opposite direction and clean that off. Being careful not to let the blade slip and slice your finger open. If you do that, the key's gonna cost you a whole lot more and you should have just went and bought one. Just take your time doing this. Be very careful not to injure yourself using a sharp blade. Okay, I think we have that pretty much cleaned up. There's a few more things we're gonna do to these pieces. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this piece up. This is the spring retention, and I'm gonna do two things to it. The first thing I'm going to do is I have a piece of tape centered right there, and from the back side, we're gonna push down and stick it to that tape. Then I'm gonna take another piece of tape and put it across the top and use, oh, this box will look familiar from another video. And we're gonna take a drill bit that is about the three millimeter size. There's some support material right there. I found that drilling it out is probably just the best course of action. I'm gonna take this guy and trim the edges.
we're gonna do is I took one of these screws and I put two nuts on it because some of these holes you don't want a lot of friction in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put this in there, go all the way through. See, too much friction. And we wanna pull some of that material out so that the screw, not this one, will go in there so much easier. Do not, do not touch the screw when you do this because that screw will be hot. That goes in there, that goes in there. Perfect, look at that, that's how it's gonna go. Okay, and that should cinch right down into those holes. You can see that there's still a little bit of filament in them that needed to be gotten out. But as the screw tightens, I think you'll be okay because these don't have to be cinched down super tight because you want your paddles to have freedom okay so i believe that we have this all cleaned up and ready for the next step right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the audio portion not the audio portion but we're gonna use the audio jack and you need three two inch wires for this particular part of the project a soldering iron some solder maybe a dirty needle nose plier or whatever size nut driver you might need for that. But what we're gonna do is solder these wires to the contacts of these guys, the little tabs, and solder it to this. But I recommend installing the audio jack first because you might have to spin it. And if you have wires attached to it, that is going to be a little bit of a pain. like so. So this is the ground conductor. This one is your dash. So when it's in this orientation, this one is the dash and this one is the dot. And so your wires are gonna cross from one side to the other for this particular portion. Now, I've already cleaned the tip. We're gonna take each of these wires and I'm gonna put them in this way. Why am I doing that? Because that is gonna be, that's contact. Orange, this is Cat5 cable. I just had a piece of scrap laying around, so I, I pulled it apart. Put that one in there, use that to hold it. And then this one, a little more tricky, because I'm gonna go from the top and let it come down like this. And I had it in there. There we go. Now we're going to tin the tip of the soldering iron again. And we'll do the ground one first. The next thing that we're gonna do is solder these little contact tabs onto these. And this is where having a third hand would really help. I don't have a third hand, so what I'm gonna do is put it 
be this way. And now, let's put solder on this contact. The next thing, we're gonna put the nut on the back of this guy. Or technically the front. Okay, that's on there. I didn't totally, totally didn't just hurt myself there. Okay, the next thing, I have all of the screws laid out on this picture of the, the printout of where the parts go from the printable site that Jonathan put on there and I have everything separated into where it needs to go so let's start by laying these parts out we have the right paddle we have the left paddle we have this I'm not gonna take those out because they'll go missing we have the spring and the spring tension -er. Or it, he calls it the spring clip, but it helps to make the tension. You can adjust the tension of your key. The first thing we can do is put in the M3.8 M3 nuts or screws into these particular sections right here. There's your contact spacing. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is for the paddles, we want to go ahead and put the M3 by 6 screws. This is what makes your contact. We want to go ahead and get those to go through. Now the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and put our standoff and the screw for the standoff in through the bottom. Now that, I'm using the one, the screw that came with the standoff, so it's just a regular Phillips head. So we're gonna take and put that through the bottom right here. Put that on there. We do not want the body to turn. Now, if it does spin, you do want to straighten those contacts so that they're straight. That looks pretty good right there. Okay, the next thing. We need to assemble the paddles to this. So, we're gonna take two M3 by 16 push them up through the bottom. The next thing on this left paddle, we're gonna use that M3 by 10 plus the nut. So this nut should drop down in here, like so. And then we can go ahead and, and push that down. Maybe we'll use this to push that down so it'll go straight. Good. 
Okay, and then we're gonna put the screw in. And the last thing, this is where I'm gonna dump this stuff out. This sits on top of the nut right there. And I know I made that fit earlier. I'm gonna have to go back and sand it. Okay, there we go. That fits down in there. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, the nut is not what actually does the the tightening. You want that nut to be cinched down in there. So go ahead and tighten this down. Pull that nut all the way to the bottom. What actually does the screw tensioning is the actual screw itself. So when you back it out, you'll have less tension. See how that moves back out? That's why you don't want to have a large hole here. I just did what I did because I should have printed it without support material. So that goes inside of there and the spring should help that move back and forth. So we're gonna push that down in there. Guess that's as good as it's gonna get for now. The spring should do the rest. So now we're gonna take this one, this particular contact, we're gonna put it on the left side like so. Go ahead and... Oh, you know what? I didn't do the magic trick to these right here. You want these to be super free flowing. Should have showed this earlier. You want these to be free, free rotating. Okay, now let's start over. Left contact goes, yes, that's how we want that to sit on there. Let's take the nut. If you run into a problem like this, you can take one nut, put it on the top like that, and then go ahead and tighten it in there so you can get that to pull up. That's how we want this to look, right there. So, this should, fro yeah, see how it's flowing freely. Now we can finish doing what we were gonna do there. So what I'm doing here is I'm using two washers and two nuts. One. Two washers. And you could probably get away with one nut, but we're gonna use two. And then I'm gonna put some Q-Dope on the top of that to keep that from spinning. We just want this to freely float like that. Okay, spring. We need to fish the spring. Fell right there. You wanna go ahead and get this spring set in there. Then you can take this one. Actually, that's the side you want the spring to be on. Let's do that again. Don't forget your plastic part, which I almost forgot. That sits in there like that. The spring goes inside of this hole and sits in there. You wanna go ahead and do this part before you assemble everything. Otherwise, you're gonna be in lots and lots of trouble. Now it's in there. Now our, our contacts will spring back to life. Now let's do the same thing over here. We're gonna put one nut on the top of this and we're gonna fight it.
can see this key is starting to take form now. Take that. We're gonna put two washers, one to ride on top of the other. We don't want any friction there or as little as possible so that the key can spring back to where it's supposed to be. So we'll put one on there and you don't want the spring, the, the paddle flopping up and down. So we're gonna put one nut then we're gonna put the second nut on there and then I'm gonna put some Q-dope, just a little drop of Q-dope right on the top of those so that they don't screw, unscrew themselves. So now we have contact. Q-dope is Q-dope and it serves as a pretty nice little alternative to Loctite for things that aren't under a lot of tension. Let's clean all that off so we don't spill it everywhere. And let's get just a, no! There's our dollop right there. We're gonna put just a dollop on the top of that right there. And that should keep that from backing out. Now we do need to be careful that we don't stick our fingers on it while we're working with the other stuff, but we want to put that right on top like that. That should keep that from backing out. We can clean up any of that mess in a little while. So the next thing that we need to do is these right here, all we need to do is find out where they need to go. So white's gonna go here and I might have made white a little bit too long. So we're gonna bend it back like this. And that is an M3 by six, which disappeared. So I'll get another one. Take this M3 by six nut or screw, put it through the contact. Now, these crisscross, so this contact is gonna go to that side. And we need to push it towards the back, get it out of the way. Oh no. And I can see where that's gonna be a problem. I have royally messed up. You can't do it in that order. And I've already put the Q-dope. Well, we went in the wrong order, but everything seems to be working. We can take the two nuts. The only thing that I don't have are the magnets right now for this particular video. I'm waiting for those to be delivered. And through the power of video editing, you won't know what the ruckus the children have caused today. You can take a screw and put it through. I used an M6 or an M8. And you can hold on to that and then twist it in.
the last thing you need to do is put your lid on your cover so you can smush that down so it's not in the way. You could also use your pliers and gently pull this wire back and this wire back to get those to sit down some so the lid doesn't get in the way. So you can do that right there. And then you pop your lid on and it slides on like this. Bloop. Bloop. Look at that. And then you take the last two screws, the M320s. And because we already loosened these holes, look at there, you can hand tighten them through because there's not a lot of friction to get it to go. I have one more on this side. done the only thing left and of course in the directions it does say that the magnets are optional and I don't have that particular note here do I I do magnets it says quarter inch I didn't buy quarter inch I think I went with five millimeter because that's about what this hole comes out to be now five millimeters is about a fifth of an inch so I think a quarter inch, the way that the infill and all the support material, how it's stuck there, I think the five millimeter by about two millimeter magnet should work fine here. And that is the key. And then you can go and play radio. Now, the magnets, you could attach it to something heavy and metal and go do, 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 do. You see, if it's just something very low friction like this, it's gonna fly around. But if you're operating portable, you may not be carrying around something like a heavy base. You may not want magnets because ounces make pounds. Grams make kilograms eventually. So you might just want to carry it and use your key like this. have a completely 3d printed key and buying all of the parts that are on this list can be expensive on the front end but if you can get some people in your club to pitch in and you guys have a build session if you have somebody who can print the key the plastic you know if you buy a roll of plastic it's gonna be about $25 for a kilogram of it but Imagine how many of these you can make. This is only 50 cents worth of plastic. Then you get somebody to buy a half dozen audio jacks. If you buy all these screws in a kit like this kit, that's going to run you about $15 for all that. Now, if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy all of these in individual packs, you're still going to spend the same amount of money and then you're going to be stuck with one key. This is $15. I can build a dozen from this. So that comes out to about $1.50 maybe. The springs were probably the most expensive thing. Uh, they're not even in this box like they should be. Oh, they've all escaped. All the springs have escaped. These springs cost me about a dollar a piece. These about six dollars for a hundred that's pennies pennies it's about 18 cents maybe these guys I think were ten dollars for ten and they're linked in the article and I'm just gonna keep all those in here and then I left the plastic on this so that when I close it kind of prevents a barrier from the little things mixing with the big things. These guys right here, these are your standoffs. I use the M3 by 10 millimeter, 
on the drawing that was made by Mr. Kane. He used the three by six. If you drilled the hole out on the bottom or clean that up, you could have put a nut down there. And you could also have used the M3 by 10 or the M3 by six. Well, there's 20 there each. You could make a bunch off of that. And everybody who does projects needs some standoffs anyways. This was again, about $10. So you can see if you nickel and dime it, it adds up quite a bit. Find somebody in your club that can print with a 3D printer. Or maybe your club could pitch in and get their own 3D printer, especially if your club has an actual place that they meet on a regular basis that is owned by them. That's well, probably pretty rare in these day and times, like an actual maker space with a radio. I know that my club back in the 70s used to have a building in the city office, the city building, and they were up on the second floor that they would meet and they had the room and they had a radio set up and everything. All right, so now it's time for you to go build one. I'm currently working on an improved version that uses bearings instead of just plastic on the screw for the rotation of the paddles. I'm also making a spot where you can put bigger magnets on the bottom. So we're gonna try maybe a 12 or 15 millimeter magnet on the bottom. See if that helps it to hold it to my metallic base so I don't have to hold it in my hand to actually use the key. So this is W1RCP and projects are where we're at sometimes. There's been quite a few projects posted lately. Hope to see you down the log and we'll do another project soon.